Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. B, we cannot hear you. Please turn on your uh, microphone. It's on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? OK. Sorry, I was yelling. <laughs> Anybody hear Beatrice? I can. I think they can. OK, then. So it's me. OK. <laughs> Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, today, we'd like to talk about, about mastery learning. Um, how did it all start? Well, actually, Don, Donald said um, one day, um, he said, I'd like to do mastery learning. And, and that's how it started, basically. Um, and so after some discussions and some research and all that, uh, we thought that we'd give it a go and we'd experiment. So. It's at the experimenting stage. Um, before I get into it, before I share you what we've done, um, we were not able to finalize anything. Um, this is a project that I think we need at least another year or maybe two more modules to think about and to practice um, in order to get our minds around it and our, our heads around it. Um, before I begin, or let's just start off. Uh, before I talk about what mastery learning is, um, I'd like you. I'd like to um, uh, to list the participants. First of all, we had students um, that we that we chose. Um, TDU members helped us out um, as observers, and um, CMDU members helped out as observers. And the instructors uh, we had Shebnam, we had Matam, uh, Sorry, we had Shebnam, we had Ebro, um, Phyllis, Yeshim. Rehan, Ayun, um, Eti helped out as well. Nina helped out as well. Um, we had Michelle Douglas and we had Jill. And um, Armand and Dennis as well. Have I missed anyone, Shebnam, Ebro? I don't think I have. Okay, so let's begin. What's mastery? Um, basically, mastery is. Um, when you, when you compare it to traditional learning, uh, with, let's, with traditional learning, actually, we um, our students, they go through a school or they go through a program and um, they accumulate gaps. And what I mean by these gaps is that uh, students go on to learning, let's say, a new grammatical item without mastering the current one. And, um, and based on the research and, and our observations, we noticed that um, because both students and the teachers have to follow a curriculum in a set frame time, these gaps accumulate. And as the gaps keep loading, um, what happens is, in the end, we, um, we, hit, we hit a wall, basically. Um, and so that's why sometimes we get comments like, English makes no sense, or um, I can't learn a language, I'm not good enough to learn a language. So this means that we need to find a different way to learn. And mastery learning is an option. And unlike uh, traditional learning, where all the students move in the same direction, um, disregarding their level of learning, uh, with mastery learning, students can go at their own pace uh, within a group of students. And how does that happen? Well, basically, students progress through the material at their own level. Um, they try as many times as they need until they have mastered the topic and they can go on to another topic once they are ready to go on. They get feedback as they learn and they get help as they need, basically. Um, and what's the teacher's role? Basically, they track student progress, they identify any gaps by observing the student's performance, and they can give students one-on-one -on -one attention. Okay. So um, how about with a class of 20 or more students? Well, we can have videos explaining the concept. Um, we can have adaptive exercises available for students. By adaptive exercises, I mean exercises that about the same topic um, at different levels. And we can have many progress checks through feedback or chats uh, using checklists or criteria. So this could be uh, feedback from the teacher to the student or the student to the teacher. And what will be going on in the classroom? Well, basically, less lectures, uh, more interaction among the students, um, and deeper mastery over the material by sharing 
with uh, sharing what they've learned. Um, and so what happens is um, with a setup like this or this kind of learning and teaching, uh, students can take control of their learning um, so they can set their own pace. Uh, they master the concept at their own pace. Um, they build their own growth as individuals. So mastery is basically not just for learning or not just for learning a school subject. It's something that you can use um, in anything, basically. And students see that they have the potential to build up knowledge. So you, as a teacher, you, um, you have a class full of future engineers, doctors, economists, architects, basically participating in class and contributing at different levels. Okay. So our experiment, basically, um, after a couple months of talking, uh, Donald first suggested this in the summer and in October, we started thinking about it. So uh, what we did was we chose 30 students from level A. Um, they were chosen randomly by the teachers that volunteered, basically. Um, and we did not want the, the, um, the high achievers. It didn't have to be the high achievers. We wanted mixed abilities. So we had a classroom set up of five to two, six students. And we had one teacher, we chose a teacher who would be delivering the material. And in the classroom, we'd have one to two observers. So you have a small classroom with five to six students, one teacher who will be delivering the material, and one to two observers. Um, the reason why we had um, a small group of students is because we didn't get a lot of students volunteering. Um, so you can apply this to any size, basically. Each teacher delivered the material or the input by following the same steps. Um, criteria, we had a criteria used by the observers and the duration of each session was 50 minutes. So basically what we did was we assumed that a set of objectives were presented to the students and these objectives were taught. And then we tried to assess them through mastery basically. So our first try was basically um, the theme was my favorite room. And so with mastery learning, you need to find the theme and without sharing any information with the students, you get them together and you present the theme on the spot and you say, okay, now this is what we're going to do. And you're going to take them through the steps, but you're not supposed to be so much involved in it actually. So the first one we thought that we do, um, the output would be speaking. So, the theme was my favorite room. And so I'm going to share our um, lesson plan with you. So basically what happened was the teacher walked into the classroom and reflected the image that you just saw and said, um, and welcomed the students and said, okay, today I'm going to describe my favorite place. And so, the teacher has a script and while um, explaining what, not explaining, but basically while telling them that they're going to be listening to him or her about the description of his or her place, um, he or she handed out a blank card to each student and said, while you're listening, I want you to think of two questions to ask about my favorite place. Um, and we wanted the students to write down words or phrases, basically, to the best of their ability. Um, and so here is my question card. Sorry. And we wanted, we didn't tell them to think about the questions that I have where it says questions to expect from students, but we hoped that they would come up with these questions based on the activities and all the stuff that went on in the classroom up until that time. So they got a question card like this, and here we wanted them to write down questions to the best of their ability. Okay, going back. And so after listening to the script, they wrote, while listening to the script, they wrote down their questions. And at the end of part one, we said, okay, now you have a couple of minutes. Um, to think about what you've heard and to add any more questions or to delete a question. And um, when we got together at the end of the session, the teacher said that this part was kind of difficult. They didn't know 
some didn't know what to do. Um, some were able to cope with it, but some were not able to cope with it. So then we went on to the next session, to the next step. In the next step, the instructor handed out um, two short texts of about 200 words describing two different places. Um, and, let's see here. Okay, here it is. So they got this sheet and they read about Dubai and they read about Murano's kitchen. And we told them to underline or circle the words that they were familiar with or that they were not familiar with. And um, we asked them to write down any useful vocabulary that they think that they would use throughout this lesson. Um, they're allowed to ask each other questions. They're totally flexible. So they were allowed to ask questions, ask each other questions, not so much the teacher or to the observers, but they asked each other questions. Um, they were able to flip through their course books, um, through dictionaries. They, they were allowed to use the internet. So they're totally, they're completely free here to do whatever they wanted to do. And after we completed this, we went on to the next part. Uh, hello. Okay. And then we said, okay, so now they got the input and their input was listening to the teacher, um, taking, you know, listening about a place, about her favorite place. Uh, they prepared some questions. They jotted down some ideas. They read about something about two places and they dotted down some vocabulary and stuff like that. So we got them thinking about the topic. And then we said, okay, so now um, I'd like you to prepare a poster about your favorite place. This could be in your house, at school, a city, anywhere. And we told them that they could use their course books, their question card, the reading texts and internet, etc. And so here, the purpose of this was to see, to observe how well they were able to use the input that they had. Um, they decided how they wanted to organize their poster. Um, we didn't want them to write long sentences. We wanted them to use short words or phrases. And uh, we provided the poster paper and the markers and stuff like that and um, for them to start out. At the end of the 10 minutes, we said, okay, so now we'd like you to present your poster to the class and tell us about your favorite place. And while the student was presenting, we wanted their friends to, um, on a piece of paper, we wanted them to, to, make some, to make some notes about the presentation, the things that they liked and the things that they weren't sure about. And so this could be something that they did not understand during the presentation or something that they really were interested in or liked about it. And so um, after doing that for a minute or so, we had the feedback session with um, the students. And basically the students um, gave feedback to each other and the instructor got involved only if necessary. So at the lower levels, you may have to intervene to get, you know, the, to get the message across or to help out student. But basically, it was the students um, interacting with each other. So this is how the lesson went, basically. This may look like something similar that you've done in the classroom. Um, but this is at the more at the assessment level now. OK. So let's go back to where I was. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, yes. So what happened in the classroom during the input stage and the production stage? Students interacted. The stronger students helped the weaker ones. It was a relaxed environment uh, for everyone, basically, uh, while being observed by a stranger even. So they were not so stuck on and a, a stranger being there and, and you know, um, and, and making little notes about them and stuff like that. And here we have a poster. I don't have everything with me at home, so these are the ones that I had. But here you can see something very basic, but I think a good output, where here she described um, her bedroom. And you can see the vocabulary there um, and the sentences at a basic level, again, something that we expected from level A students. And here we have another one. We have Atakum Seaside, a different place. Uh, my favorite restaurant is Origin, beautiful sky colors, wave sounds, crowded but relaxing. Um, 
So actually we thought it was quite good. It was quite interesting to see the students having a good time. Yes, definitely well done to the students. Um, and, and the teachers weren't so involved actually. We observed that and the teachers also said that they did not have to um, be so much involved in the process. So for this one, basically, um, what did we assess or what, what did we want to assess uh, is basically their speaking, how they presented um, their favorite place. And in the future, hopefully, if we continue with this, then we can um, evaluate their performance based on that. Now, what were the observers doing? Well, let me show you that. We prepared um, an evaluation grid. Now, during the process, the teacher who delivers a lesson is just there monitoring, and the observers got a checklist. And the checklist basically evaluated the learner based on the statements, basically going through each step. You can take a look at that. Um, so good use of the reading input, um, good use of time to think about their poster, how much time did they put into it, um, and how did they make use of their time. Did they refer to any of the input um, during the presentation? Did they listen to their peers? Did they take notes? Were they able to ask questions? Even though it may have been difficult for them, did they still try and produce, you know, produce questions um, in order, you know, just to see if they participated or not? And so in these tables in the little boxes here, the observers made comments. Um, and Number seven is basically, was he or she able to present their topic? Was the message clear to the audience despite grammatical difficulties, language barriers? We're not, we were not very stuck on the grammatical um, area, basically. We were looking at their performance and, and how well they could deliver the message. And question number eight, we asked our observers to tell us whether they thought that that student would be able to survive the second half of level eight. And so what we did was, what we wanted to do was basically before all this corona business came up, is basically is to look at their performance and then see at the end of the module and see if they were able to um, go on to the next level, go on to level B or not. And the final part is basically with mastery, it's not really about scores, it's not focusing on scores, but it's more focusing on the learning and how much learning has happened. And so we have an evaluation report here with um, three categories, surface learning, um, is it temporary learning, is there evidence of temporary learning, um, meeting expectations, uh, was able to meet the level of objectives, did you just make it, or, um, was there a greater level of understanding? Was he able to apply it in a different context, basically? And so um, these are the three categories that, that we looked at. And um, some of them were at the surface learning because they struggle a lot, they're quite weak. Uh, some of them were just there, and some of them really went. You know, it was obvious that they, that they, um, that they mastered what they had been taught in the classroom. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go back now. I don't want to take it. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay. So. Okay. Post mastery assessment, we all got together and we identified the gaps, we reflected on the student's performance, um, we got input from the observers and the, and the instructors who delivered. We also got some feedback from the students and they were quite enthusiastic about it and they wanted to do more of this. Of course, this involves being, um, you know, students need to be responsible and they need to, um, they need to actually promise, when they promise to come, they need to actually show up. That was kind of an issue. Um, and we looked at ways to improve the assessment itself, actually, the length, the criteria, um, and input and stuff like that. We made some revisions to the task. And so we wanted to gather more data from a different perspective, so we set the date for the second assessment for November 17th. On November 17th, we told our students that we are going to um, talk about, we took our students to Barcelona. And so we said, let's talk about 
our favorite holiday destination. And the format of this one was different where the output was writing, basically. Um, let's go back quickly. Uh, how nice. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Ready? Kind of having internet problems here. Okay, so here we are. So again, the students walked in. Um, we had fewer students the second time round, unfortunately, but we still had enough to do it. And our instructors were still enthusiastic to stick around and help out. So we reflected the image, we welcomed the students, and we got them to sit in a semicircle, and we had observers sitting behind them. Um, and we said, okay, so our topic today is favorite holiday de destination. And so basically this time, while the instructor was reading the script, um, we got the students to do a dictation test. So while listening, they filled in the gaps. And the second part of it was uh, basically what happened is reflected the, the answer to the dictation and we got the students to check the answers together, check their spelling and stuff like that if they're interested because they're going to make use of this uh, part um, in their output. And then in the next step, we said, okay, now we got them to sit in pairs and um, we had the weaker ones with the stronger ones it kind of happened, you know, really naturally. Um, so we said, now we want you to think of four questions to ask your friend about their holiday destination. And they got a table where they, um, they uh, formulated questions and they got answers from their friends. In this part of the task, we noticed that the students really struggled with uh, question formulation, and this is a common struggle for them in level A. Um, and so the, the stronger students actually, they helped them out and they copied questions from each other, and, but they were able to produce some language there. Um, so after producing the questions, they asked each other questions and they did some note taking and they wrote down either um, phrases or sentences or they wrote down important words. Um, and then we said, now using the information that you've got, um, we'd like you to tell us about your partner's favorite um, holiday destination. So to the whole class, they reported uh, their partner's favorite holiday destination. After doing that, we said, okay, now that you've um, listened about a, about a holiday destination, and you've asked each other some questions, you presented um, some, um, you presented your partner's favorite holiday destination. Uh, we wanted them to gather all the information that they got, all the ideas that they got, and we asked them to write a paragraph about their friend's favorite holiday destination. The reason why we got them to do the speaking part is to get them to actually to do the speaking practice is to maybe to like to give each other ideas while speaking, while presenting it basically. And so we noticed that some students, you know, jot down ideas and vocabulary and stuff that they, they ended up using in their paragraph. Um, so they wrote a paragraph and they got 20 minutes for that. Um, and then we said, that's the end basically. And we got feedback from them. And it ended there. Um, we didn't have time to get together again, unfortunately, but uh, we were able to put together, um, hold on, I can't find it. Sorry, where is it? Here it is, okay. Um, a criteria. So in testing, we prepared a criteria and this is going to be new to our participants, but this is something that we're, we're thinking along. So we thought, okay, so we got, you know, some, a piece of writing. And so basically we thought, how can we do this? So we have five bands here basically, and one is needs improvement. We have beginner, we have capable, accomplished and expert. Um, basically here in mastery, we should be focusing on the quality of writing because that is our, fo our, um, our focus. But we also added an element of grammar usage and mechanics um, I think it's a testing thing, habit, but um, in case we needed to um, to take a look at that as well. And so by taking a look at the student's piece of writing, um, we gave it a score. And so for this student, we thought that she was able to accomplish, she was able to meet near experts, so she's near a mastery student. Um, she's nearly mastered everything. Um, 
And so we gave her a score. We gave her four out of five, basically, based on what she's written. Um, and if you and we, when we decided to take a look at the grammar, we thought that there are minor grammar mistakes that shouldn't have happened, you know, um, along the way. So we thought that she was capable in terms of grammar. And that's all that we, we were able to do, basically, unfortunately. Um, but based on all this, if you take a look at the, sorry, if you take a look at the benefits of mastery, first of all, we have student interaction. Students are free to move around and they can gather the information that they need. And this, is ha this can happen in an assessment environment. They can, gild, uh, they can gain and build problem solving skills. The classroom setup is relaxed. It doesn't feel like an assessment. Um, it's not a cold or intimidating environment. This is, uh, there's also less in exam anxiety for both students and the teachers, actually. Teachers can reflect during the process um, how the lessons were delivered up until that day and what really happened or didn't happen in class. Um, you have, you can give written feedback um, and the written feedback I think is much more meaningful than um, than a number or a score, basically. This is where you can identify gaps and, and areas that, that the student needs to work on. Um, the learning process is basically continuous. While doing the assessment, the learning process is continuing, actually. They are actually learning um, new things. And it's also motivating for the students because they push themselves, they take control of their learning, and basically they're thinking out of the box, which is what um, we want. And I'm almost finished. Reflection. Um, it was difficult at first. I th um, you have to change your mindset. Um, I think as a tester, we're always like, okay, you know, scores, scores, scores. But no, actually, it's not like that. Um, we need more training, of course. We need to do more of this to see the, the drawbacks and the benefits and see the areas that we need to, to uh, work on. Um, we need to train our mind to focus more on the production, figure out where the gaps are and not so much on the numbers. Um, this could be a transition to a pass or fail, basically, which is something that people have been talking about. Um, we'd like to involve higher levels, like level C, D, and pre-faculty. Um, more experimenting needs to be done and more work um, needs to be done, basically. Like I said, unfortunately, um, we this is the experimenting stage um, of our project. Any questions? Oh. Uh, could this work be done online? Um, I'm not sure. I think we need to plan it and we need to think about it. Um, but I think it should be, it can be considered. Any other questions? Okay. Um, before you all go, um, there's a quote that I'd like to share. Uh, recently, I think this is a very nice quote, actually. Um, you don't need to, you don't need math genes to be good at math, basically. Um, and I think this is true. I think we are all able and capable of learning anything and everything. Um, and, and I think mastery is one way um, that we can, you know, discover ourselves. Um, and thank you for listening and thank you for coming. Bye, see you all. <laughs>